Hey, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. And yes, I know my voice is off. It's because I got a throat tickle thingamajig going on, and that's fine. I, I feel completely fine, throat tickle aside. But that is neither here nor there. The point today is we're here to talk about Stellaris Infinite Legacy. And you may or may not already know about the drama going on in this campaign, but before we even get into it that heavily, two things are true here. One, there's, there's reasons from today until tomorrow not to back this game. Two is I don't think it's that degree of a big deal that it might actually be concerned about. I, is it a good back? I don't think so. Is it a dramatic stay away, red flags all over the place? I don't think so either. I just think you're signing up for an experience that may or may not be exactly what you want. And let's let's dive into it. So to begin with, before I forget, there is a humble bundle. I'll throw a link down below. I forgot to pull it up on my screen. There is a humble bundle option to get Stellaris Infinite Legacy, the uh, Stellaris, the video game, for like a dollar plus expansions and this and that and everything else, which is very relevant because that will factor into the early bird proposition, the early bird pricing on the table. And speaking of early bird, before I forget, if you missed this, I posted this in my, uh, my, my YouTube community, so I posted a link to this already, but there are two different early birds on the table to get two different miniatures in this Stellaris game. Uh, the first First is going to be for a miniature that if you signed up for their newsletter by Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, then you unlock that miniature. Otherwise, I think it's like an $8 optional buy. Number two, which you still have time for if you have like another 48 hours from when this video goes up, basically Tuesday at 3, 3.16, March 16th, Tuesday, you have until then to sign up for the early bird pledge, which you can see on the screen over here, which you can see on the screen somewhere over here. Definitely over here, Early Bird Deluxe Option, $170, which is going to give you the Kickstarter-exclusive Stellar Devourer Broodmother, which you could otherwise pay for, and a copy of the Stellar's PC game code, which is a $40 game, usually, but right now a $1 Humble Bundle. So that, that price value there is a little bit off in terms of getting an extra $40 valuation on the game in terms of if you're making that comparison. But the $8 extra for the Stellar Devourer Broodmother, that certainly is on the table. So to begin with, before we get further... If you're interested in this game and you think there's a chance if you're going to get stuff, go ahead and sign up for the early bird pledge. You can always cancel. Not a problem. Do what I do. I set reminders, you know, 21 days to go. I set a reminder for 20 days left where I'll cancel my early bird pledges just to make sure I don't accidentally get locked in. But it does at least get you all signed up and locked in in case things develop, in case things give you a reason to back the game if you are finding yourself with someone on the fence. But speaking for myself, I don't have an early bird locked in, and, and this is a game that I theoretically would be interested in, but I personally am choosing not to sign up for this journey, and I'm choosing to not even lock in my early bird pledge to to get signed up for this journey. And, and that's going to be because there's a whole bunch of red flags around the project, and I do not think any of them mean that you're not getting a game. I do not think any of them mean anything overly dramatic. I think there may well be a great game here. But I've decided for myself that it's simply not a risk that I'm willing to take. That is not a journey I want to be along for. But I understand anyone who does. And anyone who does, there's 11,000 people who jumped in on this campaign. $2 million raised already. People are signing up left, right, and center. Now, don't get me wrong. Once that early bird checks out, that that you're going to see a drop-off of how fast it grows. It might still continue to grow. Depends what else gets delivered. Depends what else they talk about. What updates they reveal. It depends on how many more people find out of the campaign. There is certainly a crossover from the board game and video game audience happening here. And that does mean a lot of people who may not be aware of what to look for in a Kickstarter. Of the things that typically drive a normal board game Kickstarter. Especially when it is coming from a normal board game company handling an IP. And so those are things you want to be mindful of before you back this game. And we're going to go through all of those. But before we get into that, let's talk about the game on a high level. Now, Stellaris is going to be a 4X board game with simultaneous play that theoretically gives you a two-hour experience for two to four players, five to six players if you get that expansion, which will be in that $170 optional buy. It's $170 pledge level. You'll have the expansion, 14 plus, but we can ignore ages. And like I said over here, two to six with the Empire's expansion. And it's promising you that 4X experience. This is going to be a game that is going to be competing very much with games like, with the games like Eclipse, with games like Twilight Imperium in terms of that epic 4X experience on your table uh potentially with the, the the upcoming last light by roy Canada, which is going to be an a uh, simultaneous play 4x game that i personally played and i played and knocked down in about an hour and i think stellaris is going for more depth and more growth in the experience it's giving you but ultimately you're talking about a 4x experience with simultaneous play that shortens the play time while hypothetically or hopefully not shortening the depth of the actual game as far as more than that that's that's where i tap out that's where I don't have more information to really give you here because 
they didn't give us more information. Something that is suspiciously lacking on this page is any form of content creation on the game, and that's going to be one of many red flags. Now, we'll go into the red flags in a second, but let's talk about the pledge levels first, and then we'll go through all the, the things that make me just a little bit wary as far as how this journey is going to develop. But again, none of that wariness comes from a lack of you getting your game or a lack of a decent game at the end of it. But again, we'll, we'll cover that. So, pledge levels. Plus, levels to begin with, you have $110 for the standard edition of the game. In general, normally I tell people don't back a game that has a standard edition only, but get, get that at retail. In this case, they are saying it will only be available from Academy Games' website or web shop directly, which means you're not going to see online retailer discounted pricing, which means that $110 pledge level is not the worst. Now, note, it does not come with any other stretch goals, so it just has Slot Infinite Legacy board game. You could get it, depends what the pricing is on the website, but we won't see that deep, deep discount aftermarket pricing from regular board game stores so it may not be the worst pledge that being said as you can see over here 145 backers have backed into that pledge level and we have 10,860 at this pledge level because as of right now it is likely the better buy in terms of what you're getting what do you get over here you're gonna get the Stellaris infinite legacy board game you're gonna get all unlocked stretch goals that get unlocked and we'll come back to those stretch goals you're gonna get the empire's expansion which adds fifth or sixth player in case you wanted that i mean if it's a, if it actually delivers a two hour long 4x space experience you're going to want to potentially play with 5 and 6 too, especially especially with simultaneous play. Simultaneous play at higher player counts is one of the best ways you can have a high play pound, higher play account experience at your game table without dragging on for a four-hour-long game or for a game that is ultimately just longer than the experience it should be at. Additionally, it gives you that Stellaris PC game code for Steam, which you can give to other people. Now, normally that would be roughly a $30, $40 value, depending on the current price or sale price of Stellaris. But for right now, that's a dollar value because you can get that at Humble Bundle right now. So, and depending on when you're watching this, obviously. But so that's a factor you have to factor in in terms of the, the value on the table right now and the potential flooding, especially if you're hoping to sell that Steam key, as opposed to if you wanted it for yourself down the road or who knows what. And then it gives you that Stellar Devour Broodmother Crisis Boss Miniature as well. And that's going to be the main pledge level there. Past that, the pledge levels on the table are going to be the regular Deluxe Edition, which is the same exact pledge level, but without all the extra stuff. And as usual, I love it. I love it. I was going to say, as usual, you find a bunch of backers on these pledge levels for some reason. So if you are one of the 290 people who are watching this video and you are currently backing the non-early bird version of this pledge level, please change your pledge and comment. Comment down below if you are someone who changed your pledge because you have the wrong pledge level. You are currently signed up for the wrong pledge level, the pledge level that costs the same amount of money and gives you less content for no reason whatsoever. So go ahead and change your pledge level when you have a chance. Let me know in the comments down below if you're one of the people who did that. But past that, now that we've covered the, the game and whatnot, and then we'll cover a few more things actually. In terms of uh, shipping, shipping's gonna range from 20 to $70. Let's go ahead to the shipping table. Shipping is gonna range from roughly 20 to $70 if I can find this over here. If I can find this, I have this campaign, the screen way too small, I'm realizing. I did not adjust my screen before filming, which is a horrible mistake. But we're gonna go ahead and scroll down over here to the bottom. And we have shipping. Shipping is going to range from $20 to $70 for the game or from $35 to $80 for the deluxe edition of the game. So you're looking at the $35 to $80 range, maybe $25 to $80 range. They technically have that low end over here, depending on international, domestic, all that factored into that into your pricing. In terms of that, that is going to be on the table. So if you are an international backer, you are going to be paying, you know, potentially 20% more or whatever that's going to be for you more on this game, which takes your $170 game and makes it a chunk more expensive as well. Past that, after the fact, like I said already, it will only be available on Kickstarter. It'll only be available on Kickstarter now or from Academy Games Direct on the website. At least that's what they're saying about the game. And so with that, let's go ahead and jump into some of the stretch goal situations or the, the drama, the red flags, everything else going around the game. And so to begin with, the, 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 we talked about the first thing already, which is going to be the lack of content creation around the game. At least I think we talked about it. I don't actually know. Let me go back to that page. But overall, there's no content creation around the game past a single video from Bauer's Game Corner. Now, I have no problem with Bauer's Game Corner. I actually know Bauer, great guy. But more importantly, the only video they have, if I can find it, is a single video from Bauer's Game Corner that doesn't even have a copy of the game and they didn't play the game. They, they're doing a preview from talking to Academy Games, from talking to people involved in the project, and they went ahead and talked about, you know, the game there, which is fine. But that's not a lot of content creation around a game that has $2 million funded, 11,000 backers, tons of people clearly invested in this game, a degree of surprise involved, a degree of lack of anticipation of how well this thing would do from Academy Games. They clearly had no idea how well this campaign did, and that's not necessarily a huge problem in and of itself, 
but it still does make me question whether I should be back in this game or not because we have a multiple problems in terms of the general availability, the general awareness, the general prep, the general idea that there is a clear and finished product on the table here. I don't have that confidence for a variety of reasons. One, not a single content creator has gotten their hands on the game at all. They have not run any tabletop simulator or tabletopia demonstrations with content creators to get their quotes, testimonials, any of that. This game, if, if not for the fact that it was coming from Academy Games, I would wonder if we are the target audience for it. By we, I mean if the board gamers are the target audience for it, as opposed to video gamers. It seems like video gamers are more the target audience based on the fact that they're not doing any of the normal things you expect to see in a Kickstarter project. And yes, they have this huge IP, Stellaris, you know, the board, the video game. They have this huge IP, which means that they might well be just getting a different crowd of people. Now, they don't have a finished rulebook. I don't personally read finished rulebooks on any, nearly any Kickstarter projects. But the fact that they usually have a finished rulebook means there always will be people who do, who can comment, who can post, who can adjust, whatever, anything along the way in terms of researching into looking into the game. The lack of a finished rulebook, the lack of any gameplay demonstrations, the lack of any prototypes, the lack of any of those things around the game make me really question how finished is this game? I mean, it's a $2 million campaign. Like I said, I understand they weren't prepped for that. But you'd think getting a rulebook to the table would be a decent priority for something that is is going to be sold to people. That there's a degree of availability of we have a rulebook, we have a gameplay, we have some form of availability, some form of showing you what this game is about. Because as of right now, we don't have that. We have, and by the way, I do recommend watching the Bowers Game Corner review or the preview because while this campaign is suspiciously lacking, and not suspiciously, is lacking in a degree of, of information about their game... And while that video doesn't actually have the game or they haven't played the game, it actually taught me more about the game than any, th any other source I actually had about the game from the campaign itself, from any content, from any anything around the game. It still had the most despite having never played the game. So I do recommend watching that video in terms of finding out a bit more about the, the way the game plays, the aspects of gameplay, the nuances of how this game is different or similar than other similar games. All that is relevant there. But So that's going to be the first and biggest red flag which is the lack of any form around of prep around the game. Now, to counter that, I do want to note that I said already, I started this video off by saying it's I don't think it's as big a deal as many people are making it out because Academy Games does have a track record of delivering projects. I mean, if you look at Academy Games over here, if we take a look at them and we see over here, where are we? If we go to over here and look at Academy Games, they have a chunk of games under their belt. They have delivered good project after good project, and this isn't even their first IP experience. They dealt with uh, Agents of May and Pride of Babylon, which had a, uh, that was, I believe, an IP as well. And they, so they, they have both IP experience, a game that's decently rated. I don't know much about the Agents of Mayhem, but if you look on Board Game Geek, it's decently rated. It seems to be fairly well received, all things considered. And they have tons of other games that are incredibly well rated. If you look on Board Game Geek, if you take a look at, at Academy Games, you see some of their games that they have. They have a great track record of delivering solid, solid games to tons of people across the spectrum, wide spectrum of, of different types of games. So on the one hand, we have this complete lack of prep around what Stellaris Infinite Legacy is going to be as a board game. On the other hand, we have a track record of delivery that is there. Now, if you look at the comments in some of their past Kickstarter projects, there are complaints. I'm not saying there's not complaints. There are complaints about components, about delays, about this and that. You will always find those in almost every project. The question is the frequency, the amount, and how well they generally handle. And overall, Academy Games generally seems to deliver, which is why I'm saying, despite the red flags that I have started going into and will continue to go into, I still think you're going to walk away with a finished product on this thing. Number two, no refunds after the project closes. If we scroll down to the bottom over here, we have a risks and challenges, and we have refunds somewhere. Where are the refunds table? Uh, refunds about us. Why can I not find the refunds table? Maybe it's in the FAQ. Will we see refunds? Nope, nope, nope. There was definitely a refunds table somewhere. I cannot find it now. Where is the refunds? Give me a second. Give me a second here while I try to find the refunds table that I totally saw before but do not see now. Refunds. Let me do a control F for refunds. Refunds. Nope, we got nothing 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 so now i'm wondering if they took it down because before previously they had a thing they had a section about refunds and i'm wondering if it was removed but they had a section about refunds in which they said that there are not going to be any refunds on this project once the kickstarter finalized once the kickstarter ends which is fairly unusual usually the standard line is you see you know you kickstarter might keep you know we might keep 10 percent of the game or have 10 percent of your of your fund of your goal of your pledge because the rest of it's going to be refunded but less fees 
But in this case, they had a blurb, which it looks like they may have removed. I'm not sure, certain about that now. But if they remove that, then great. If they're adjusting that, then great. But the lack of refunds, on the one hand, it might be tied to any sort of IP uh, deal on the table or whatever they had to do to get this IP. That might be something that they can't change. But nonetheless, it is certainly a flag. Number three, four, whatever it is. There has been minimal to no comment interaction. Now, this has improved over the past day. I do want to note that. The first two days, they clearly weren't prepped for how well this campaign did. And we'll talk about them in the stretch goals as well. But if you look at the stretch goals, one of the parts that people talk about a lot is the fact that this game started. We had $50,000, $55,000 for gamma lasers. We had $60,000 for leader regeneration, $65,000, $70,000, $80,000, $100,000, $130,000, $170,000. It started jumping rapidly. Now, this is what it seems like after the fact. If you follow this during the time, they went from 65,000 to 500,000. They had a clear straight jump from 65 to 500,000 because they were not prepped for how well the campaign was done. Now, they did add these after the fact, which is nice. There were a lot of upset people about uh, talking about the fact that, you know, they had this giant jump of 65 to 500 with no whatever. So they have spaced it out. They have added that, which is great. But in general, they were not prepped for how well the campaign did. And we went from $5,000 jumps to $100,000 jumps for getting a single card. Now, this is fine, by the way. The idea of stretch goals in general, of, of having larger gaps to accommodate the project, it's not generally tied to in t in how well the campaign does across the board. There is a degree of ebb and flow of how stretch goals are managed to give extra content based on how well the project does, while not over committing because they have to give something every $5,000 and on a $2 million campaign, that would mean they would basically break their ability to deliver. So I don't mind the spaced out gaps. I'm pointing more to the fact that they had no clue how well this campaign would do, and they were prepping for $5,000 jumps, and they had to jump it straight to $500,000 because they were at a million dollars day one, which is absolutely insane. Happy for Academy Games, but they were completely unprepped for that. And they spent the first two days not really engaging at all in the comments. They had like one update, a complete lack of interaction around a game that was doing incredibly well, that they were just not prepared for how well it would do. Which means my final thing, and the reason why I'm not involved in this game. At the price point we're talking here, at $170 for the deluxe edition of the game, which gives you the base game and the expansion, and a lack of clear gameplay as to how well the game does. And it's worth noting, their first gameplay, I believe, is supposed to be today. I think their first gameplay is supposed to be today at, uh, I don't remember when it was, let me see if it's an FAQ. They had a gameplay announced. Will we see a playthrough video? The first will be Sunday at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. So at 2 p.m. Eastern Standard Time today, there will be a gameplay of this game, which I do recommend checking out if you're interested in the game. But currently what we have here is we have a game that has a bunch of flags as to how well, how prepared they are for the actual game, how prepared they were for this game to do well on Kickstarter and the audience they're engaging with there. And then the price point, the price point of $170 for this game. We start talking about a price point of, do you want to get Stellaris? Or do you want to get Eclipse Second Dawn for the Galaxy? In the same price range. Do you want to get Twilight Imperium 4 for the same price range? Now, these are games that are going to be different in terms of how they fit on your table and whether they are interesting to you, whether they are games, you know, do you want an eight hour long experience of Twilight Imperium? Eclipse is shorter, but not that much shorter. It's, you know, a four to four hour game, four hour long experience. Or do you want to potentially sign up for Stellaris, which promises a four X two hour long experience with who knows what as far as the actual gameplay? And so when comparing this to other products on the market, with other games, and by the way, that IP thing is a negative as far as I'm concerned. The IP constraint is a, is a constraint. It means they have to sit there and make the game as good as it possibly could be while following any sort of IP restrictions, while trying to match the gameplay of the game, while trying to, to follow along with whatever rules they have to follow along with in order to have that license. Generally, I consider IP and things to be a bad thing. It does not mean the game will be bad. There are a lot of great IP games out there. But it does mean that it's another reason why it might be bad. And with a lack of gameplay, a lack of showing you how things are going, a lack of general preparedness, a lack of a rule book, a lack of anything to really sell me on why I need to get this game, for myself, I'm currently passing on it. For myself, I'm not willing to take that risk. As far as the should you back in, this, the should you back in this one is a mess because the should you back in is not this is going to hold its value or it's not going to hold its value. I have no idea. Unfortunately, at the end of the day, I don't have any confidence that this game will be a good game that people... Are, are trying to find on the second-hand market after the fact. Like people are trying to find that Kickstarter exclusive version of Stellaris with all the stretch goals, all the extras, because it's the best game ever. Or whether it'll be another game that is expensive and no one really seeks out because it's a good game. But we're, we have tons of good games. We don't need another good game. Is this good? Is this great? Have people talked about it? Have people raved about it? Is anyone really truly interested in this game? Or are they interested in the IP? It's a complete uncertain... It's completely uncertain. I have no idea. So this falls into the category of what I generally call a, a wild card. 
It's it's not a safe back. It's not it's going to hold its value. Nor is it it's a, it's a bad back. It may well hold its value. Dark Souls, Dark Souls, which think about it, Dark Souls is a mediocre game in general. If you look at the overall ratings, not your individual experience, because the last time I talked to this, I had people saying, I love Dark Souls. That's great. That's awesome. But the general ecosystem gives Dark Souls a, you know, it's an okay game. It needs fixes, tweaks, adjustments. And yet it does a decent job holding its value. It does a decent job of being able to sell for what people paid for it because of the IP combined with a decent game. It's a different market, but it still managed to hold its value. Stellaris may find itself in the same place. Stellaris may be a game that there's enough of a solid system. Again, coming from Academy Games, they have a solid track record. It might be enough of a solid system with enough of a robust fan base that it may well hold its value even if it's not the next amazing 4X space game. But I'm just not confident in that. And speaking for myself, it's not a journey that I'm signing up to be on. That's the, the overall everything. And also, I should mention, I'm not personally interested in the art, the components, the, the the video game. I don't have a personal interest in any of that, so I'm just not emotionally invested in the project from any of that sense as well. And until next time, I'm Alex Radcliffe from Board Game Co. I hope you enjoyed this video, and as always, have a good one.